Hello everyone, in this video we are going to mention homomorphic facial recognition with Tensil and DeepFace libraries. You can find out more information about this topic on my blog. I'm also going to share this link in the description of the video. Homomorphic encryption enables to make calculations on encrypted data. In our use case, we are going to encrypt facial embeddings with homomorphic encryption algorithm and then store them in a cloud system. Even though the cloud system doesn't know the secret key, it will be able to find the Euclidean distance value between two encrypted vectors. We are going to need two requirements in the study. One is tan seal. You can install this package with pip install tensil command i'm going to define its alias as ts the second is the face we can import this requirement as from the face import the face you can install this requirement as pip install the face command as well I'm going to find the embeddings of facial images first. The path of the first image is deep face and and its test folder. Move to dataset folder and here let's get image one.jpg and the second image is going to be image 2.jpg here image 1.jpg and image 2.jpg are the items of the deep face unit tests and these are the profile photos of Angela Julie to find embeddings we are going to use deep face library and call its represent function under its interface here we are going to pass the exact image path as input and an optional model name argument exists in this function. Here we are going to pass FaceNet facial recognition model. This is going to be embedding of the image one. Similarly, we are going to find the embedding of the second image here. Embeddings are found and let's see the content of one embedding. That's actually an array or multi-dimensional vector and its size is 128. Notice that embeddings are going to be found in the client side. Secondly, I'm going to initialize the tensile context and in the stage we are going to create our secret and public key pairs. Here, context is going to be tensile.context in this context function we are going to firstly pass the schema type and this is going to be tensile.schema type and we are going to use ckks let's remember the content of an embedding the items are real numbers here that's why we have to use ckks here Secondly, we are going to pass polymodulus degree and it's going to be 81, 92 and we don't need to print the embedding here anymore. And thirdly, we are going to pass coefficient module bit sizes. I'm using standard input values for these arguments. Once context is created, here we are going to call generate Galois case function and set its global scale to the to the power of 40. Here context stores the both secret and public key pairs. So you have to create your secret and public key pairs in the client side and store just the public key in the server side. That's why this stage is going to be handled in the client side as well. In Python we mostly use pickle uh, module to store complex objects but Tensil doesn't support pickle. That's why we have to do something different. It uh, provides the serialize function and uh, this is going to convert this 
complex objects to bytes. Let's check the input arguments of the serialized function. It has a sev secret k argument and its default value is false. I want to store the secret k value here. That's why I'm going to set this to true and this is going to secret context. And let's check at type at bytes. I'm going to create common functions here to write bytes objects and read byte objects as well. The first function is write data and it expects the file name and file content. I want to store byte objects uh, as base64 encoded. That's why I'm going to import base64 module and in the write data function of the type of the file content is equal to bytes then we are going to convert bytes to base64 here file content is going to be base64 dot b64 encode and pass file content as is this is going to convert this byte object to base64 after this check we are going to Call with open and open this file and set its mode as write bytes and uh, set its alias as f. Once file is opened, then f dot write and write the file content. This function is going to write byte objects as base64 encoded strings in this way it's going to be human readable text write read function as well read data and we are going to pass just file name here we are going to open the file first with open file name and its mode is going to be read bytes and its alias is going to be f as well here file content is going to be f dot read and remember that we stored base64 encoded strings here that's why the content of file content variable is going to be base64 encoded string to convert base64 encoded text to bytes we are going to call base64 dot b 64 decode and pass file content here result of this function is going to be bytes object that's why i'm going to return it as this and mention this is the bytes object our common functions are ready and we can now save the secret context here i'm going to call write data function and it expects file name first and let's say at secret.txt and file content is going to be secret context notice that we set the save secret k argument to true this is important to save secret k and it's written let's check the content of the secret.txt at stored here that's almost one megabytes and this is the content of my secret key. We saved our secret key and now it's time to save our public key. But before that, we have to call make context public function here. Because this function is going to drop the secret key. Otherwise, uh, you are going to publish your secret key to third parties here. Similarly, we are going to create public context. And this is going to be context.serialize. We won't set the save secret k argument to true. Remember that its default value is false. And finally, we are going to call write data function and set file name to public.txt and file content. Is going to be public context. 
And let's move this line to here. Our public key is written to this public.txt. And this is going to be moved to cloud environment here. I'm going to delete the context itself. Secret context and public context. This is important because we are going to encrypt our data in the next stage and the encryption requires secret K, but we drop the secret K in the context variable here. That's why we are going to restore our context in the encryption stage. Now we are going to encrypt our data and remember that encryption requires secret K and the just client site knows the secret key that's why it's going to be handled in the client side but its results are going to move to cloud system let's restore the context first tensile dot context from and here i'm going to call root data function and read the context of secret dot txt we are going to encrypt our embedding data here tensile dot ckks dash vector and here pass the context and embedding itself and it's going to be encrypted embedding one and let's say it to encrypted v1 similarly we are going to encrypt the second embedding we are able to store those encrypted tensors as well we are going to call write data function and file name is going to be encrypted v1.txt and content is going to be encrypted tensor dot serialize Similarly, I'm going to store the second embedding, second encrypted embedding as well. We forgot to set the argument name here. Now I'm going to delete the context and other stuff. Encrypted first tensor, encrypted second tensor. The next stage is calculations. Here, this is going to be handled in the cloud site. And uh, cloud site is going to know just public key. And it's going to make calculations with encrypted tensors. Here, encrypted v1 and encrypted v2. Let's restore the context in the cloud site. But uh, cloud site just know public.txt also restore encrypted tensors as well tensile dot lazy ckks vector from and here we are going to call root data function and remember that root data function expects just file name file name is going to be encrypted one dot txt for the first encrypted tensor similarly do it for the second tensor as well we also need to link the context encrypted first tensor dot link context out here we are going to pass context we know that this Encrypted tensor stores 128 dimensional vector because it's the output size of the face net face recognition model. And the Euclidean distance formula requires to find the difference between uh, each dimension among those vectors. That's why I'm going to find the difference between those encrypted vectors. Remember that those are encrypted but we are still able to uh, subtract them let's set this subtraction to euclidean squared 
variable Euclidean distance also requires to uh, find the uh, squared values of uh, difference of each dimension that's why I'm going to set Euclidean squared dot Euclidean squared itself and this stores the Euclidean uh, distance squared values encrypted value now I can write the data of Euclidean squared value file name is going to be Euclidean squared dot txt and file content is going to be Euclidean squared throws an exception because we forget to serialize it so we are going to transfer Euclidean squared value to client side and client side will decrypt it because it knows the secret key but uh, cloud side doesn't know the secret key let's check it try to call decrypt function and it throws an exception and it says that the current context of the tensor doesn't hold a secret key plus provide one as argument that's expected because we uh, restored public key here but we are uh, able to uh, run this decrypt function in the client side because client knows the secret.txt here we should delete the context and other stuff such as encrypted first tensor second tensor and Euclidean squared value as well the final stages decryption and this is going to be handled in the client side we are going to restore the context from secret.txt and we are going to restore Euclidean squared value as well remember that we are going to call uh, this lazy uh, vector from function but the file name is Euclidean squared.txt also we need to link the context Euclidean squared dot link context and uh, reference the uh, private key here now I'm going to call Euclidean squared uh, this is an encrypted value dot decrypt and it returns 66 and get at zero index value we need to find the uh, root squared value to find the Euclidean distance but uh, I need to import the met library here and call met dot square root uh, it's 8.14 and this is going to be Euclidean distance we are going to verify phase pairs if the distance between them is less than the threshold value 10 in the phase net uh, phase recognition model and Euclidean distance uh, pair that's why I'm going to check this value is less than 10 threshold value if this condition is satisfied then they are same person otherwise they are different persons and in our case uh, remember the Euclidean distance value is 8 and uh, they are same persons and they are really same person so we have mentioned homomorphic encrypted facial recognition uh, with Tensile library and also DeepFace library in this video. In this way, we can store facial information to the cloud systems and we can also use the power of cloud systems easily. Thank you guys all for watching and see you next time.